Hi, this is Felissa Rose. I'm Angela Baker from Sleepaway Camp. I'm with the Skeleton Crew. Meet me at the waterfront after the social. You're listening to the Skeleton Crew. Radio at its scariest. Hey, what's up? This is the Skeleton Crew, and welcome to our Sleepaway Camp Retrospective. And no Sleepaway Camp Retrospective would be complete without Angela Baker herself. Yep, that's right. Angela Baker, a.k.a. Felissa Rose, will be joining us later on in the show. This is Alex, and I'm joined by Michael J. and Dan Chase. Right. Hey, I'm just happy to be here, man. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people uh, asked me... When did you guys start doing the retrospective thing and this and that? Is there any other shows? And, Mike, the, the only other one we ever did, we started doing this on September 12, 2010 with Psycho. Right. We did all four Psycho movies. They're online somewhere, I think. You could just type in something on YouTube. They're not on our channel, but you could find them. I think, in- they're, on my, I think they're on my individual channel, maybe. Mike Flick's channel on YouTube. M I K E. F-L-I-X yeah. on YouTube. And we weren't too good back then, so I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, put too much time into those. We'll probably do that again and uh, yeah. make them better yeah. because we're a little bit better now. Well, I, I would think so. We're more seasoned. Yeah, we're more seasoned. That was back when we just started. Uh, and the Friday 13th, we did a retrospective on that, of course. Uh, that was April 2nd to the 13th, so check that out on our channel. So those are the two retrospectives, and now this is the Sleepaway Camp retrospective, which is, uh, this is going to be one of my favorite ones. Uh, is it? I, I could tell already, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. So, cool. and, you know, we hit a couple, you know, milestones. This is our 20th episode. I guess that's a big deal, even though we did 12 in a row. All right. <laughs> <laughs> episode 20. And uh, our ratings hit over 3,000 listens overall for the show, so that's, that's pretty cool. I think so, definitely. Yep. Very cool. All right, now, now this retrospective is going to be chock full of spoilers. If you haven't watched these, turn this off. Yeah. Especially the first one. Or watch them for the first time, or watch them again and then come back. Exactly. Sleepaway Camp 1, 1983, starring Mike Kellen, Catherine Kamhi, Paul D'Angelo, co-starring Jonathan Tristan, Felissa Rose, Christopher Collette, and Karen Fields. Felissa Rose is the killer, Angela Baker. Her yeah. cousin, Ricky, is Jonathan Tristan. So Angela and Ricky are the two main kids in this movie. What struck me about these movies is that these movies have a quality that Friday the 13th never really had, in my opinion. See, Camp Crystal Lake is the main focus of you know Friday the 13th movies, but I never truly felt like I was at camp. When I watch those movies, yep. you know, it, it's that's more of like a background setting. It's like a campground setting in the background. I mean, like uh, when you watch Sleepaway Camp, you know that you're at camp. You and know. camp is such a great setting for a horror movie too, Alex. Like, can we agree on that? Like, you could use so many different storylines and so many cool things with camp. And, dude, Friday the 13th, we talked about that before, how they didn't utilize it. And it's like, I think... What would you say? Maybe the first Friday the 13th, maybe the second one were, were the real quote-unquote camp movies. Like, that's where they went, you know, as far as they possibly could with it. And then from there, it kind of drifted away until what? what six. Um, until six with the kids coming back. And I like that aspect where they brought it back. But nothing really overtly about camp. And like I said, I love that as a setting. So when the Sleepaway Camp movies, watching them, they're fun, but there's a lot going on with, 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 you know, the camp setting, and I like that. But, see, the thing is with these movies, dude, I still don't get it. You know, they're quote-unquote, and I hate to use this word, can't be in the sense to right. where, you know, did, did the filmmakers know what they were doing? Like, you know, they, they obviously had to know that they were creating something cheesy. But do you think they planned exactly how that movie was going to go before they made it? I don't know. I mean, sometimes what might look one way on paper looks another way when it's acted out and when it's shot. I mean, and when the effects are there and things like that. I mean, they 
they could have been going for something that it didn't turn out to be. But I don't know. I think what it turned out to be, this is one of those movies, the quintessential, a capture the 80s feeling movies. And when you capture the 80s feelings on any level, it's going to be, you know, cheesy or but... corny, you know, things like that. Uh, so I think that's just a part of the era it's shot in. You know what I mean? All right, well, just for some uh, inside information, uh, Ricky's hands were used for all the murder scenes, as most people oh, already know. Yeah, the boy. I don't know. That, you know, because a girl's hands are different than a boy's, so yeah. it would throw us off, you know, you you, should, you think it would be a boy anyway. Uh, it has one of the greatest twist endings of all time, quite possibly, which we'll get into towards the end of this. I, I remember I got my sleep, I never even heard of Sleepaway Camp, I was walking through Best Buy and I saw their survival kit and just something about it just drew me to it and I was like, this sounds cool, Sleepaway Camp, a whole thing. And I'm, you know me, I'm a sucker for franchises. Like, I have to watch every movie of, like, if if I like a movie and there's a franchise for it, I gotta watch the rest of them. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Yep. And I sometimes you pay dearly like I did with Hellraiser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Going over. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, okay, so so right off, the opening scene of this movie is pretty intense. You know, with the water skiing accident, it looked a little forced and cheesy. Turn the bow. Yeah. Turn the bow. Yeah, it was cheesy. That girl was uh, a very... See, that's what I mean, though, Alex. Like, they had to have been going for that. And then look at the mother and stuff like that. Like, they had to have been going for over the top. Because... Well, actually, that, look... was, that was the aunt. Well, that was Ricky's but, mother, but... but right. And was aunt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's just something about the, these movies, though. I was trying to debate. I was going back and forth in my head saying, did they mean to go this cheesy with it? Because that seems to be, you know, that seems to be the thing with with these movies. It's so cheesy. And I was having a blast with these, to be honest with you. And I yeah. was laughing throughout the whole fucking thing because I love 80s cheesy movies. And this is kind of a quintessential, um, you know, example of that. Well... I wouldn't even re- relate the other two to this one, or three for that matter, to this one. Um, right. Yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't even talk about them in the same realm. I think they're completely different. The feeling is different. The approach is different. Everything's right. different about it. It's almost like Sleepaway Camp is one thing, and Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 are almost a different franchise in my eyes anyway. You know what? Right. Point, Alex. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I don't even relate them at all, except for I watch them in order. That's about it. But. Right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, this is really cheesy, uh, so you got, uh, the girl screaming, you got the gay lover standing there, and, uh, the, here's the biggest question for right off the bat, how does a, a gay guy have two kids? I think he was a closet gay. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, okay, so, you know, it, it's really weird, like, after the guy gets mauled by the boat, and he's dead, and he's, uh, you know, floating in the water... His his boyfriend just goes, John, and he stands there. That reminds me of like Halloween when like that moment where Michael's parents just stood there shocked after they took Michael's yeah. masks off, and it's just like for effect. It's just for movie effect. Like in real life, wouldn't he have ran down, made sure the kids were okay, made sure John might be alive, and do CPR on him? Nothing. If I was the guy, I would have just run down, jumped in the water, and I would have went. And tried to like drag the uh, the body to land and try to resuscitate it. I mean, because look, there really wasn't a lot of blood on John's body, no. so he could be alive there. And he was just floating face down. He didn't. I mean, come on, that's not believable to me. The guy could still be alive if you really loved him. You want to go and try to save him. I think. Uh, perfect example: Shutter Island. Shutter Island. Leonardo DiCaprio finds his kid. That's a real reaction. This exactly, Alex. It was. It was stupid. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean you want real? That's real right there. You know. I mean, maybe he just didn't feel he was worth it. Maybe the guy didn't give a good head. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> maybe he didn't really love him. He and like the, the accident was a setup. Maybe he paid the um <laughs> the, the water skiers to to kill the guy. Maybe he had a gag reflex. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like... <laughs> Mike, we're going to hit you again with this. <laughs> All right, so so what? I, I, like, I, I like what Dan was talking about. Let's talk about the crazy Marilyn Manson out of a mental ward ant. 
Wow. Uh, oh, Desiree Queens. You, she. I'll tell you what, and I know like now she she does like a uh, real estate work, I believe. I'll tell you, she played that part perfect. Like there was nobody, I think, that could have delivered the crazy like she did. Uh, I couldn't tell if it was bad acting or right. I'm going to be the most bizarre human being in the world. Look what I did. I packed you and your cousin some goodies for the ride up to camp. Wasn't that nice of me? Hmm? Any chips? Why, of course. I believe there's a whole bag. Yeah, she was straight out of a uh, John Waters uh, movie. <laughs> yeah, it was just... Uh, I was like looking at the screen and I was... I did the, the, the whole, uh, you know, head tilt like a dog does when he's looking yeah. at you. Like, huh? I was yeah. like, what? But you know what? This movie's full of disturbing people, dude. Yes. Oh, when the kids all run over to Camp Arawak, you got this guy saying, Look at all that young, fresh chicken. Where I come from, we call them baldies. Makes your mouth water, don't it? Hardy, they're too young to even understand what's on your mind. Then, good buddy, there ain't no such thing as being too young. You're just too old. <laughs> now, oh, you, you know what? And it's weird because as I was watching it, I realized what they meant by baldy. Uh, what? This last time you watched? No, actually, before, like when I was like when I would watch it when I was a kid when I first saw it, I wouldn't know. And then, like all the years, you know, I didn't go, but. When I watched it this this last time, I watched it with more of like a a curious analytical eye. And when I did so, I'm like, "Oh, he's calling them baldies. That means they have no pubes." <laughs> well, what really like creeps me out about it is that everybody around him is just standing there when he's saying that, and the the black guy is just like, "They're too young to even know what you're talking about," or you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, oh, by the way, that cook, that black guy, that's James Earl Jones' father, you know. Is it really? Yeah, that's James Earl. Yeah. Wow. Darth Vader's father. Yep. Um, then you got the the camp owner, uh, Mel. Now, was he M Mr. Furley or Mr. Roper on Three's Company? <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, he does. I mean, no. It can't be you. It can't be. Yeah. You know, he actually died the year this this movie was released, 1983. Oh, I thought it was a while ago. It was cancer, I think, that killed him. Yep, so he was on his way out while you saw that movie. Yep. Uh, you know, and you got Judy and Meg perfectly cast. Yeah, oh, I agree. The, the two bitches who hated Angela. Oh, yeah, dude. Yep. Yeah. And I would have taken both of them. You would have what? What's that? I said I would have taken both of them. Taking him where? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Mike was more intrigued by Ronnie with those high shorts and the muscle shirts. Well, I got I got to, I'll tell you what his calves were amazing. Wow! Wow! I, that's a drop we're pulling. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, but and and the best part was with with Judy, she didn't have a bra on for a lot of the film, so that was kind of. Yeah, and that's a problem. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a and I, problem? Yes, that's a problem. Dude, a problem. This, this guy Paul goes, hey, Judy's here, and wait till you see her, and he's holding his hands out like she has these big tits and shit. Then right. all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, yes. I'm like, all right, baby, let's see this, Judy. Let's go. Let's go. Right. You know, I'm like, in, in my mind, I'm picturing freaking uh, Carmen Electra standing there. All of a sudden, they cut yeah. to Judy. Oh, yeah, they go to Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and she has these big... Yeah. B cups. <laughs> See that? See, that that's I, perfect. I got in her. See, but that's perfect. I loved that. I thought that that was amazing. Right. Hmm. All right. Now that's another thing that I want to bring up too, Alex. I don't know if you uh, were going to get to it, but I just got to bring it up. Yeah. That they used like actual fourteen-year-old kids to play fourteen-year-olds in the movie. Like Angela and Ricky were actually the ages that they were portraying, I would and think. you know what, Mike? I like that too, man. You know, that, that felt authentic because you see so many movies nowadays that, that try and fake it, you know, going over even 10 years. So, yeah, that, that was pretty good to see. You know, right. I the, thing is, 
that wouldn't that wouldn't fly today though, Dan. Like no, they, that's they what would I'm not let that happen. Right, exactly. Let's get to some kills because that's what this is all about. Mm-hmm. All right, the first kill may probably is the greatest of the movie. Angela, this guy is cooking corn in a pot that's five uh, feet tall. Yeah. Oh yeah, my Artie. god. Yeah, already. Now, now look, and that's the same guy. The you know the we call them baldies. They make your mouth water. Now, this pot is pretty dangerous, whether the killer is at camp or not. If you ask me, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's a pretty tall pot. I mean, if something goes wrong there, uh, I, how do you even get the corn out of there when it's done? Is what I want to know. God only knows. But that was disgusting. I hated that corn. Uh, uh, but cl- classic kill. I still cringe to this day when you actually see him on the floor. And no waters behind them because it's so hot. It must like instantly evaporated, and his his tongue is sticking out, and he's fucking melted, man. Right. And the way he's screaming, I still cringe, and I I tense up. I'm like, oh god, I feel it in my mind. Wasn't he the child molester guy, too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's get to that before we even get to him <laughs> dying. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, okay, what the F moment. Go to walk yeah. oh, I got like, something yeah, to really like. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, dude. That was a crazy scene. Dude, that was the craziest part of this movie besides the ending. Like, okay, now this is the kind of guy. Terrific. Yeah, th- this is the kind of guy who buys a Serbian film on Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, and you know what I love? Like when he back. when he brings yeah when he brings Angela into the walk-in and he starts unbuttoning his pants because she's yeah. he's a, she thought he thought she was hungry for something else. I love how the right. kids the kids run out and he walks back in, out in front of his boss and all the other workers <laughs> fixing his belt. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yeah, and nobody says oh, anything shit. about it. Like they don't even like they don't even realize that you know he's that uh, that was a little strange. I thought. They're probably so used to it. Like, he just, that's what he does around there. Oh, my God. Then why is he still working there? That's <laughs> my question. That too, though, Alex. I was like, is this guy for real? Like, he just <laughs> had no shame. He just he didn't care. Just like, yeah. <sighs> Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> if, I, if I was with two little kids anywhere and they ran out screaming, I would be, like, fixing my hair and making sure my shirt was tucked and I looked good when I walked out of the room I was with, like, just to not draw attention. Like, okay, guys, right. I didn't do nothing. I, I'm perfectly normal, right? Now this guy's coming out and fixing his belt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scratching his balls. Yeah, he was going all out, dude. Oh, my yep. God. Yeah, but that... Yeah, because Angela said, uh, or somebody said, Angela hasn't eaten in three days. But, you know, she still has the energy to uh, stand up. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and... Well, she probably drank some water. Yeah, maybe she drank, right? Yeah. So there you go. So you got, okay, well, so they took care of Angela. uh, Jeez. The killer took care of him. (laughs) Yep. Uh, I mean, okay, let's face it. Angela's the killer. I mean, we could say that, right? Yeah, we know that. I, I think we know. It was that. made in the eighties. I think it's uh yeah. it's time we let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. Exactly. We thirty years ago I think we could talk about what uh if you haven't seen it, like I said, you should turn this off already. Yeah, uh, if anybody gets mad at us for that, fuck you. Yep. No. Now I got I got a little bit of uh nerd analytical observation here. Okay. okay. You got nerd. Okay. So okay. We know What's wrong with Angela? Remember when she was sitting on the bed and she was staring at uh, Judy? And she goes, what are you staring at? Remember that? And she threw the pillow at her and Angela grabbed it and then she went and got her pillow back. Do you think that she was like staring at her because she was like attracted to her? Attracted to her, yeah. Or uh, admired that she could just be... Who she like be, that she's a real girl or that she was sexually attracted like oh dude she was she was probably she was probably getting somewhat of of wood like and you know what's we, what's weird about it like Angela knows there's something wrong with her it ain't like she's walking around thinking she's a real girl she doesn't take a shower with anybody you know she doesn't go in the pool she doesn't do all the stuff so she knows that you know something's not exactly 
gelling about her womanhood. All right, for some easy what the f moments, the clothes these people are wearing, the baseball scene. <laughs> oh yeah, what the fuck was that? Like, I love how Gino tries to come off as the cool older guy. Meanwhile, he's running around in a belly shirt. <laughs> he almost looks like A.C. Slater. Okay, what about all the kids wanting to have a water balloon fight? So let's go on top of a roof and throw the balloons two feet from each other. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, yeah, that was rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, when Paul starts unbuttoning Angela's shirt... And she starts having these, like, whacked-out flashbacks of her two dads stroking each other in bed, and the kids are at the door laughing. <laughs> now, do you think the kids were laughing because it was two guys, or would they have the same reaction if, like, they walked in on their mom, you know, piping away on their dad? <laughs> he said piping. Not- Fucking piping away. <laughs> <laughs> now, why, why do you think the kids were laughing? Probably because of two guys, in my opinion. Because it was two dudes? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yep. All right, what about the scene they where... They weren't really doing anything. Like, they were just, like, stroking each other. In a sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> what about, like... like... That, may, that may be normal for you, Mike, but for... No, but I'm not saying they were stroking each other in a sense. They were like... Actually, you know what? Let's not use the term stroking. Let's say they were lovingly caressing each other. <laughs> Okay, what do you think about a few seconds later, though, when they showed the two kids in bed and the the boy was just, like, pointing at the girl? Like, what was the finger implication? Um, well, no, because he was trying to to kind of do what they saw the, the grown-ups doing, and, like, they were trying to, like, touch each other. Okay. Right. So he was slowly, like, I'm going to touch you, but I'm going to slowly do it and really break through and really... Uh, what's it called, embark on this part of my life, which we never really do. Right, exactly. And, you know, the weird part is about that scene that you have to remember that the boy in the bed is Angela. That's not the girl. Right. You know, that's like, that's kind of a mind, yeah. Yeah, Um, it's sketchy. Yeah, it's just just so weird. And, um, okay, so let's just, okay, so we talked about the first kill already getting, like, boiled to death instantly. Now, the second kill was kind of lame, man. Like, the kid under the canoe. Hey, Baba, rebub. Hey, Baba, rebub. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Angela just pops out yeah, out of the water. That's what people said in the 80s. That was what? That's, what? that's what people said in the 80s. Now, was that actually Felissa Rose under that canoe, or was that uh, Jonathan Tiersten? I don't know. The hair is pretty long. But here's the thing, though. So Angela pops up out of the water, which which is pretty scary. But then she just she holds him. From? Yeah, but uh, where did she come from? She probably just swam in, saw him, and then swam underneath. I don't know. Yeah, but she can't swim. She said she wasn't a very good swimmer. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, hole. I, I love the movie, but this is something you guys got to think about. Oh, dude, there's uh, plenty of problems. No. Yeah, there's plenty of problems with this movie. Don't worry about it. You can talk about all of them. <laughs> plenty of right. No. Yeah. Okay, so Angela just pushes him underwater and just holds him there. What? He couldn't hit her hands away and just f- jump, float up to some other place in the water. Like, how in the world does it, does she kill? And and why because is she? She's a guy. She's not a. She's not a she. She's a gentleman. Even That's okay, why. you're right. Okay, but think about it. Even if it was Ricky doing it, how come he couldn't whack Ricky's hands away? Like, what makes Angela such an amazing killer right off the bat? She never killed a single person in her life. Nothing, and that's why I think actually she, she did though. So. She killed Artie. So this is number two. Oh, stop! She pulled a chair. <laughs> and and honestly, she, she, she blamed him, dude. Dude, if she pulled that chair, honestly, that pot of water would have splashed on her too. In real life, like you said, if if. If that girl went toe to toe with anybody, she would she would basically get ruined. Or that guy, technically, but that scrawny guy goes toe to toe with half of those guys. She's gonna come out losing, right? But these movies try to play on the fact that okay, she's got the surprise element because nobody's supposed to know that she's killing, right? Or he's killing, whatever. And so right. that's supposed to be her edge, right? Right. But 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 like you just said, it doesn't matter because. She's doing stuff like that. Like, oh, it's just setting up stupid scenarios where people get killed in stupid ways that don't make sense. And like you said, it, it, if it's going to be a surprise, then it's one thing, you know? Because like you said, you, you have a huge advantage because the other person doesn't know. Right. Okay, you can see that working. 
But when it works like that, like you said, why, you know, why didn't he just fucking push her back? It's like, that's a very valid point. And it's almost like so obvious that it's like, okay, you know, it, it completely renders this movie kind of invalid in the sense where it, it doesn't take place in, in a world that real <laughs> things exist and yeah. scenarios play out like they should and yeah, shit like that. Where is his will to live? <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, come on, you know, it's almost that stupid. So you, this is one of Honestly, I gotta break this down. These movies are movies that you sit around with your friends and get drunk to and laugh at. And, and that's have fun. Exactly, exactly and, what and, I yeah, and I had fun with it. I'm not gonna lie, it was a great time, but really, I mean, sleep away camp. That's all I'm right. saying. What really makes no sense about that entire scene, oh my god. The girls, the crop of babes that these guys wanted to skinny dip. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, did you get a good look at those girls that those guys were saying, come on, get in, let's skinny dip. Why would you try to convince any of those girls, besides the main one that was like in the front a little bit, into skinny dipping with you? Like, I'd be telling those girls to fucking wear more clothes. I, I'd, I'd probably tell them to put a concrete shirt on and tie a fucking anchor to your leg and jump in the lake. <laughs> did you get a look at those girls? I want anybody to go back and watch. I, I paid attention to this. Especially the chick, the tall chick, all the way to the left. She was like six foot two. She had this curly, yeah. tight black hair. Yeah. Oh, right. And the girl all the way to the right looked like a stuffed sausage. You gotta go ah. back. Well, wait, but, but here's the thing, right? The they're horny teenage guys. They want sex. They will look at anyone <laughs> naked. Pamela Henderson, man. Pamela Henderson. It's as good as any. It's better than any one of those chicks. I want everybody. Because I was watching this movie with my girlfriend when I was watching for the show. She uh -huh. said, she said, hon, would you want to, would you want to skinny dip with any of those girls? I said, well, maybe that one in front, but none of the rest. And we went through every one of them. Oh, my God. But if you're desperate enough, you'll do it. I have never been to that point, I guess. Yeah, I've never been that desperate, dude. Yeah. And Welcome to my world, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, now we talked about the water balloon fight on the roof. Now, that guy pegged Angela, so he was the next one to go. All right, yeah. he's, the guy's taking a shit. That was great. She drops a beehive in there. Now, there's a lot of things that don't make sense about this. Number one, why wouldn't you just kick the beehive across the room? And sure, a couple because bees will stay. Because the stall stand. was locked with the broomstick or whatever it but was. But there was it's room underneath. Out. Dude, crawl underneath the stall. Get out. You would get stung a couple of times. He was mid shit. Who cares? Look, who, who the hell wipes their ass in any Friday the 13th? Why start now? No, but I'm saying he was actually probably mid shit when it happened. Dude, when a beehive lands on your lap, you bail, man. Well, see, and that, that's another thing, like... They, those must have been some pretty powerful bees, because it looked like they took a chunk out of his face majorly, you know. Dude, he looked like he was laying there dead for three weeks in a matter of seconds. <laughs> the kid. <Yeah. laughs> oh my god, dude. Like, dude, if I'm taking a shit, look, listen, <laughs> pucker your asshole up, clip the shit, and run, dude. I mean, you gotta go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> a piece of shit's not going to uh, be the determination of whether or not I exist in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's, uh, s speaking of asses and shit, okay, the, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the prank on that kid, Mozart, making him do a sit-up into the kid's ass. Oh, <laughs> that was fantastic. You know, at, that was actually how I convinced my first girlfriend to give me a Hummer. I, yeah, I, I told her that she couldn't do one sit-up and keep her mouth completely wide open at the same time. Uh -huh. And, yeah, so she sat up, and then you hear, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I made her do it 50 times, and I actually have a recording of that. <laughs> Do you really? Wow. That's something to think. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> Brought to you by the Skeleton Crew. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I got a lot of feedback on how much people love those drops. So you know, I 
And I, I, I know these retrospectives will be heard than most of our shows, so I'll throw it in there. This whole thing with, like, how she was staring at Judy and you wonder if she was attracted to her and that's why she was staring. You know, it makes me wonder why she never stopped and asked Ricky throughout all those years, like, if she was supposed to have a dick. <laughs> I yeah, the thing is, how, how long had it been that she, like, was being dressed up as a girl? That's my question. Oh, ever since the aunt took her in. From when she got out of the hospital after the boating accident. Yeah. It's funny because we started off the Friday 13th retrospective by saying that Friday 13th is basically a ripoff of Halloween. But, you know, do you think they changed things around enough to make it its own movie? Now, I'll ask the same question. This is basically, hell, it's at camp. It's mm-hmm. basically a ripoff of Friday 13th, right down to the woman killer. Do you right. think they changed it enough and the kills were innovative enough and the whole movie as a whole was entertaining enough that it becomes its own movie. Because, let's face it, this is the bastard of the bastard child of horror franchises. Agreed. Agreed, Alex. Yeah, dude, absolutely, dude. But I think the whole feeling of these movies is different. That's what separates it. That's what that's what sets it apart. Because I don't consider these in the same, in the same realm as, or in the same, um, you know, what am I looking for? Oh, the God. same level of, of Friday Thirteenth, Halloween, you know, all that, the typical yeah. bullshit. Yeah. yeah, they're not they're not on the same level as Friday the Thirteenth. But sorry. you know what? I, I think they I think they are. I mean, Mike, am I nuts? We always disagree. But look, I think that these these three movies are. This is probably one of the greatest franchises ever. Those are the, the three most solid movies I've ever seen start a franchise off. Besides, let's just say, you know, obviously. I shouldn't say that because they all start off good. Right. What, what I'm saying is, you know, this – okay, because they stopped at three to a le- to an extent, let's just say that it stopped at three. Is this not the most highest quality franchise? I would have to agree with you. I, I think I really would at that point. And, no, I think what makes it different from, like, your Friday the 13th or other franchises is the fact that this one actually had kids campers involved and i mean this one had balls and i'll tell you why because the one uh counselor i forget his name that took those kids camping you know overnight in the woods to yeah. sleep out they yeah. all got butchered i was so, so glad you said that they That's finally ball. killed That's kids ball. yep they finally killed kids yeah that was pretty big that's awesome dude angela took a fucking hatchet to their heads dude <laughs> that is awesome now, do my you know question why? is, why did she do that? That's that's my question. The answer is because those were the kids who were throwing shit at her and Ricky after Meg threw her in the lake. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that makes sense. And he goes, you stupid fox, or like whatever he said to them. Yeah. When he was walking away, those were those kids. That's why they got off. Now, here's yeah. the thing. Let's get to Meg's death now. Okay, was Meg's shower death as effective as the shower kill in Psycho? I'm just kidding. Oh, no. I thought you were serious for a second. I was like, <laughs> No, I'm not serious. No. You know, it, it's weird, though, because it seemed like Mel was more concerned with who killed Meg rather than the fact that she's dead. Like, for a little bit, like, right. he, he, he sort of reacts to her being dead. Then it goes back to, I'm going to get him. And then it goes back to, like, her again. And, like, and, and how come he never, like, during the whole crying like oh we'll throw a clip in there for that he did it let him go i'll stop him gotta stop him won't get away back never get away how come during all that bizarre reaction he never mentioned the fact that this was probably the last time he'll ever have a chance of railing a chick who's forty years younger than him? Like that's what I would have been saying. Like, right? I could have had this vision. Could you take this one chance away from me? Like he didn't even didn't even cross his mind. But yeah, didn't so he think? I mean, and the fact is that that you know that makes it so. I, I love too how her back is just like exposed. I thought. I thought it was a cheap kill, though, overall, because it's like, there really was nothing to it. Like, 
and the yeah, fuck, you yeah. know, the knife just goes down the back. It's like there was really nothing to it. It really, it was anticlimactic for Meg. Like, you, this is one of those moments where you really, really want her to get it good. And uh, just like the guy with the pot of water on him, that's awesome. That's a great, that's a great payoff. Meg was a bitch for the whole movie, and all she got was a knife rammed through her back and ran down her back. Now, right. and, he, and here's another instance where the reaction makes no sense. I mean, he lost more than a camp counselor. Like, the whole other time, he was worried, you know, or... Or that the kids, you know, oh, he's killing off, or he's going to ruin my business. Like, he was going to bang this chick. Like, wouldn't you check to see if her, if her, like, if she was still alive? I mean, let's face it. When he walked in, she was still standing up in the shower and fell into the curtain, ripping it off. Like, I would assume that there might still be some life left in her. Before Judy's death, they show the killer silhouette in the doorway. Now, at what? Now, who was that? Because that, I don't think that was Felissa. Uh, it looked like Ricky with a wig. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Well, then we get to Judy's death. Now, it's it's the uh, curling iron up the twat suffocating combo platter. Now. Oh, so wait. So it did go up her, it did go up her twat. I, I thought that it was, I thought that she got it in the face. I thought she shoved the curling iron up her vagina. If she did put it up the vagina, I wonder. I actually have a phone call here, Mike, of her 911 call. You do? After after that uh, incident with the curling iron in her vagina. And, and here you go. Here's exclusively on the oh, skeleton no. crew, as always, yeah. Yes. You see an emergency. Hi, I need somebody to help me. My pussy is burning. It's burning. My pussy is burning. I need some help. Can you help me? <laughs> Hello? Can you help me? <laughs> Hold on, man. No. What, what, can you say that again? I need to see somebody. My pussy is burning. It's... You need to come in, then. Huh? You need to come in. I, I, I can't. It's... Oh, my pussy is burning. Can you help me? Can I, is it, can I make a house call? Because I will make a house call. Hold on, please. Hi, can I help you? Hi, my pussy is burning. Can someone help me? My pussy is burning. It's on fire. Can you help me? Your what is? My pussy is burning. Then you need to come in and be seen. <laughs> I fell. I had an accident. I fell in, tripped over my hot iron, and it, it's burning. It's scorched. Then you should come in and be seen by... Can you come? Can, can I get a, a house call? I can't even close my legs. I can't. Oh, I can't walk. You know what? But, but, but you know what? That that makes sense, Alex. That That does make sense because... When she did, you know, get the curling iron, whatever, you hear it like kind of sizzling as it was going. Right. So maybe it was her, um, the, the wetness of her, 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 the moisture. Yeah, her her oh. juices kind of interacting with the curling iron that made the sizzle. Oh. So yes, maybe you are correct. Yep, absolutely. And you know what I don't like about that kill, though. I love this movie, but what's with the hands coming up and crinkling the fingers and the shadow? Like, come on, is because this? Because she's in pain. I feel like I'm watching a comic book come to life or something with that one. Yeah, but what's the problem with it? She's in pain, though. Mm, right. Okay. So Mel gets an arrow through his neck, which is very reminiscent of Friday Thirteenth Part One with Brenda, of course. Here's the biggest what the f moment in this entire show. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear what Dan says. Right. What was with Meg wanting to hook up with Mel, the camp owner? Oh, dude. Could this movie have any more disturbing undertones? I mean, yeah, like the creep the creep level uh, in this movie is just through the roof, dude. Yeah. Like on so many different levels. Yeah, I don't know. I, dude, I got nothing. I got nothing. That just, you know, it, it was funny, too, because when, when that came about, it was almost like, eh, okay, yeah, that's about right. Like, that's, yeah, that's about right on for this movie. Like, I wasn't even phased by it. Yeah, it's on par, by, it's on par for this movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, okay, yeah, that's about right. Meg was hot, bro. I mean, look at that body again next time you check this out. She was pretty, I mean, her face is an 80s face, but she's hot. Right. <laughs> So she was using Mel. She was using Mel for his money. She was like, she's like, got a date. And she's like, with who? It's a secret. Or, you know, whatever. I don't know what she said. Yeah. That's her sugar daddy, dude. That's her sugar daddy. She was so happy about this. And then, and then at, towards the end, when everybody's realizing people are dying, you got that cop with the fake mustache. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my God, bad. dude. No. 
Can we just talk about that mustache for a good five minutes? Oh my god, <laughs> that was bad. That was really, that really, really bad, dude. To every single angle, they made sure that it glistened and it was fucking center stage. Oh, that yeah. mustache was classic. It looked kind of realistic when he came over when the kid dra- uh, got killed in the canoe. That looked real. And then all of a sudden, towards the end of the movie, it was like a whole nother, like, it just it just had its, it, its own uh, evolution on his face. And you know what's the most bizarre part about it? What's with the close-up? Why would you do a close-up? If that cop looks like that with that shit on his face, shoot, put, hold the camera 40 feet away from him and don't zoom in. Right. No, that, well, that's what I was going to say, dude. Like, it just, it, it fits in with, with what I was talking about earlier, how this movie's kind of doesn't take itself seriously at all. And that's why I don't I don't consider it the same as any of the other franchises, Friday the 13th and, you know, Halloween and all that. Because it, it's almost like, all right, we know we're being, we're being almost comedic in the sense where I know Friday the 13th and all those had comedic moments, but it, it, it adhered to a horror base and this seems more like it's almost like a comedy first like a a wacky comedy first and then it's got horror elements and it's got people killed and and all this stuff in it so that's just what it seems like to me yeah you know it the sad thing is these movies are so close to being with the big boys but Mm -hmm. they fall under you know uh, sleepaway party massacre, or whatever slumber party massacre, it falls under. Uh, sorority well, house massacre as well. Don't forget those. Yeah, it falls under sorority house massacre. It falls under like what are all of the B, you know, horror is B to begin with, but so I guess it's C movies. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. like, well, what are... well, no, I, I can't say that though. Sleepaway camp is definitely better than sorority house or slum or one that you know what. I'll even say Slumber Party Massacre is better than Sorority House Massacre. Because Sorority House Massacre exists purely on um, just making a movie for nudity. And the at least the original Sleepaway Camp had a story that was kind of, you know, that you could follow. Dude, this was an amazing story. Right. And it didn't just throw in people and, you know... It didn't just throw in nudity for nude's sake. Honestly, in the first movie, I don't really think there was any nudity, really. Uh, I don't know. I don't recall. I don't think so. I don't, Luckily, I don't think there was, no. We could thank God that there was no nudity in the skinny dipping scene. In the first movie? Well, obviously, except for the end scene. Right, right. We get to see penis. <laughs> I mean, but that same. doesn't even qualify in my book. No. no. <laughs> okay, so... I guess we're getting to the end here, so here we go. End of the movie, Angela gives her famous line, meet me at the waterfront after the social. So Paul goes ahead. I know we glossed over this, but, you know, Paul was trying to get with Angela. She talked to him out of everybody else. She uh, she kissed him. Um, he I already talked about him undoing her shirt. Then she had those visions. Now we're getting to the part where Paul screwed up. He uh, basically cheated on Angela by hooking up with Judy. Angela saw it. She took off. Then she supposedly forgave him. And Angela says, you know, meet me at the waterfront after the social. So Angela cuts Paul's head off, dude. That <laughs> Yep, just when you think he's making some progress with the forgiveness deal. Now, do you think she did this before or after he put his hand down her pants? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Um, I think she had to let him. I think she had to let him get a handful. Yeah, just to shock him, and then when his mouth opened up, like, like, do you think his last words are "What the fuck"? Yeah, I don't even think he. Had, I don't think he even had time to speak. I just think it's all like what? Oh, like he just got what? And then he yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's wild, man. So she's sitting there humming some song. Ronnie walks over with uh, these tight red pants on and some other person. They come over and he goes, huh? and all of a sudden you hear that. Oh, God, she's 
是不会有。I hated that. She becomes a soft-spoken girl to a, a beast. You know, it appeared to me when I was watching the movie, but I just, it's interesting to me. The fact that when she stands up and she's like, ah, ah, okay, how do you go from, from the sweet, soft-spoken little girl to all of a sudden this, this hairy fucking ape of a guy that just seems like he's, 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah, like, why is she suddenly, like, a beast woman? Like, you know what, though? I think it was just for, like, effect. Like, honestly, when I first saw that, and because I, I didn't get spoiled when I watched it, when I first saw that, and they panned away, just looking at her face that she was making was bizarre. Then all of a sudden you pan down and there's a dick in here. <laughs> like, all that shit. Like, dude, that was freaking crazy and what happened was that it was an 18 year old boy's body and uh he was wearing a plaster mold of angela's face i i always thought that they um they they did some trickery with like photo you know photo stuff but it was actually a guy wearing a mask of angela but mike i want to know one thing when you saw angela's penis uh were you packing more or, or did you lose to a 13 year old girl uh I was completely flaccid. <laughs> Mike, yo, that was what I was going to say, though, dude. Same thing, man. Yeah, what was that, really, though? Like, I, I, I they were going for over-the-top scary, I guess. But yeah, that, it know, worked. Stupid, dude. I didn't you like think it. that's stupid, dude? I love it. You, you and Mike both think well, that that was stupid? Well, I no, I loved it when I do it. I loved it. Like, the first time I saw it, I didn't notice it. But, like, the last this last time when I just watched it, you know, for us to do this retrospective, that's when I'm like, you know what, it is kind of just a little bit over the top for my taste. Oh, Alex, all right, I'll give it this. It was creepy. Dude, it was really fucking creepy. I will give it that. Did it right. fit into the movie? No, it was stupid. Like, I just it thought just it was... Out of place. No, exactly. It was out of character. Like, it, it, right. she, she could have played it so many different ways. But, dude, I get it. Like I said, when, when, <laughs> when she's standing there, you know, beasting it, I was fucking scared shitless. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Exactly. And I think that's what they were going for was shock value. So on that level, yeah, absolutely. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, perfect job. I mean, I'm sorry. That was just awesome. Um, I just didn't, I thought it was kind of over the top and stupid. It was, but when you first, and I don't know if you were spoiled before you saw the movie, but when you first saw the movie, I'm sorry, man, that... That and the look and the music and Ronnie going, oh my god, she's a boy, you know, or he's a boy, whatever, whatever he said. Uh, and the the visual and the looking at the dick and the sound, dude, that was this yeah. one of the scariest moments in horror movie history. I'll say that. Wow. Yep, I'm going that far. That's a fucking bold statement. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> there ain't too many scary moments, dude. Seriously, honestly, what a couple jump scares and shit. Like, like that is. That is what we want. I don't know. Is it not? I don't know. Is it, dude? But you gotta remember, this is 1983. Put, give it that respect, though. You gotta remember that part. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. that probably wouldn't fly today. But, but neither would half of the shit we talk about. You know. I mean, none of the half the movies that came out in the 80s that wouldn't really fly. Oh like, no, not at all. Definitely not. I did. I did like it, Alex. I just it, it felt like everything else in the movie just a little off with a lot of place. Didn't exactly fit in with the quote unquote horror genre. It was just almost like a in between a comedy and a horror movie and going for shock value at the same time. Almost like a um, like a uh, like a like a grindhouse movie in a sense. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. All right. Well, let's get to the part of the show that everybody turns off. Um, the ratings. I'm. Oh, I'll, I'll let you guys go. Go ahead. I know Dan's not going to give it too much. Uh, do you want to rate this within its its franchise or uh, in, as a movie in general? Well, it, within the franchise, okay. I'd probably give it. Um, you know, I'll probably give it a seven. Okay. What about as a movie? Overall, you know, up against the the big dogs, I give it a four. 
Mike? Um, well, as the as a franchise film, I give it a nine. And as a as an overall movie, I would give it uh, probably a six. I knew you were going to say that. That's fair. Yeah, as a franchise, uh, nine. As overall, <sighs> gee, I uh, I'm gonna give it a seven at least. I love it. I mean, I would like to give it higher. No oh, shit. I you know you know I'm sorry. I I can't give it a seven because I it's 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 one of my favorite collections I have. I watch it every year, and I I don't say that about most movies, even ones I like. I'm gonna give it. Now, do you think now, do you think the nostalgic aspects come into play with this movie as well, uh, Alex? Like we've talked about before. Oh, oh, like a personal, yeah. Oh, like passion, like passionate. Right, absolutely. Oh, passion, yeah. I'm, yeah, my passion. In reality, yeah, yeah. Six, six is a good reading, actually. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Passion, eight or nine. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. So admirable, uh, admirable, sir. Thank you. Uh, best kill. I'm gonna say the best kill was the guy getting boiled with water. First kill. Uh, no, first. with the arrow through the neck when he's like, it can be. Oh. Uh. Dude, getting his head chopped off. That was your favorite one, Paul? Mm hmm. Paul with the head chopped off? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, as promised, here she is Felissa Rose, aka Angela Baker, Sleepaway Camp. Alright, we're back, and as promised, we have the beautiful Felissa Rose, a.k.a. Angela Baker, from Sleepaway Camp 1983. Felissa, I just want to thank you for joining us on this Sleepaway Camp retrospective. Aww, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. It's our pleasure. Yes, thank you. And, you know, you're not the one and only uh, Angela Baker, but we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely talk about it, the two Angelas. <laughs> yes, we will. You know, it's funny, my whole life, any interactions I had with anybody, they always thought that there was some kind of rivalry between you two, like, I'm the real Angela Baker. No, I am. These are the real movies. Right. No, uh, most people do ask that question. They think that there's some kind of competitive, you know, situation, but... It's all good. I mean, I think it worked out perfectly. I love Pamela Springsteen. I think she was amazing in 2 and 3. Yeah. How did you think 2 and 3, um, you know, when I watch Sleepaway Camp, then I watch Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, they're like two completely different worlds of movies to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's why I, I thought it was so strange that people would compare them because they're so completely different. I mean, the first one, you know, Robert Hiltick wrote and directed, and it took itself a little bit more seriously. There wasn't that dark humor. And then um, when Michael Simpson took over two and three with Pamela Springsteen, it had so much more humor, and it was just like a totally different type of movie and although we're one big family yeah. you know there definitely there are big differences between the movies and there's just i mean who cares like so what you have to just love them all for what they are it's, yeah you know, I, right. we all do i think uh that's how we feel about it too yeah absolutely, yeah, absolutely. like i i love every one of them so oh thank you i do too i love two and three in fact if you ask my husband i think two is his favorite so oh really you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah yeah uh, so i have to beat him up every now and then now <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah just don't cut his head off and stroke it on the beach <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. you know you know the number one thing when when i show this to people and uh you know we all watched it everybody says did this girl's parents read the script <laughs> <laughs> I still ask my mom, like, where were you? Were you, like, smoking <laughs> something? Because, um, yeah, they, you know, my mom was just a typical stage mother, and she thought it was really cool that I got a job. So it's like they, she wasn't thinking in terms of, oh, my God, look at, you know, what she has to do. She was thinking, wow, you know, this is cool for her career. So right, right. Um, it just, it was one of those things where while you're filming, it's so completely different 
you know, um, on the set than it is when you actually see the movie. So nothing terrible happened. Yes, I was 13, and um, they didn't use my hands for any of the kills, and they didn't um, use my body for the end. So it was definitely a lot lighter while we were shooting. But it's funny because my husband was telling me the other day he was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, and some girl says something, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe she said that, and she was only 12. And then I look at him, and I'm like, what am I saying? <laughs> like, I had a penis, and I was killing people to death. Like, what, you know? <laughs> Who am I to, to ask that question? So, yeah, it's definitely, like, you know, totally different when you're filming something. Yeah. Now, did you know that you would have a penis at the end of the movie? Absolutely. I mean, I... I remember that when, when we went to the callback, Robert, um, there were probably like, I don't know, eight girls there. And Robert had to ask permission from all of the parents, you know, would it be okay if... And at that time, they were going to ask Ed French to make, I guess, a penis and like strap it on us. Oh, my and of course, God. My, oh, no. I probably got the part because my mother was like, yeah, no problem, <laughs> sure. Like, you know, she could do whatever. But... Um, yeah, that's that's how they were originally thinking of it. But, uh, you know, in the end, they just made a mold of my face and found a, an 18-year-old kid to, you know, to play that part. So, wow. the poor guy. <laughs> he, had to get, he got, like, wasted on a bottle of Jack, you know? Oh, yeah, to do that? Oh, oh, my God, he was crying. Yeah, it was mortifying. Like, you're standing there in front of a huge crew. It's freezing. So I don't think he, you know, he looked as good as he could have. Um, <laughs> and he had to be, I think he, they shaved him a little bit, and he, he he was tiny because his face, his face and body had to resemble me somehow, you know? Right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was definitely, like, horrifying for him. Oh, He's yeah, a real been star of the movie. <laughs> What's that? Said I would have been drinking, too. <laughs> oh, my God, absolutely. I, everybody was drinking on that set anyway, but that's another yeah, story. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, I always thought that that was, like, trick photography because, I don't know if everyone's recollection is the same, but wasn't wasn't he standing completely still? Did, didn't it seem like a still shot that they just kind of backed away from? I always thought that that was your real face, and it's weird to think that it was a guy wearing a mask of you now. No, it was the close-ups were me, were my real face, um, and then when they, you know, when they yeah. had the the long shot, it was now it was a real guy standing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah, definitely, it's definitely strange. The whole thing looks weird. Yeah, and and, and the the noises that you were supposedly making. Yeah, it, there was definitely some of my voice in there, and um, uh, you know, it was just he was trying to make it as creepy and bizarre as possible, and the whole movie is really you know, dark and strange. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that scene alone really, really got me. I remember, um, I remember seeing it a long time ago and I just recently rewatched this movie and that scene still holds up. That really freaked that me last out. Scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd have to say the reason people probably remember it. I mean, look, we're talking about it today. It's 30 years ago, exactly 30 years ago. Like, I think the only reason we're talking about it, because let's be honest, it's not like, you know, this unbelievable piece of cinema, but it's like that end, that end moment is definitely yeah. original and shocking. And those are the two reasons why I think it holds up and people remember. Oh, my God, Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, that really screwed up, you know, <laughs> chick with the dick at the end. You know, <laughs> that's why people remember Sleepaway Camp, because of that last shot. Yeah, that's what I think. It's just my opinion, and from no, you're right, opinion. absolutely. No, yeah, you know? you're, you're right. That's that definitely made it stand on its own, and it, it probably was the reason for all the sequels. I mean, it was just that much of an impact. Now, here's the impact that I'm worried about. Did, what did all your friends at school say when they saw? <laughs> like, like <laughs> I'm just imagining boys afraid to talk to you, you know, for years to come. <laughs> You know, it's so funny, like, to try to remember and think back to what the reaction was. I, I think I went to see it with my whole, like, eighth grade class, and I still talk to a bunch of them on Facebook, and they're like, yeah, I remember when we all went to the movies to see it? It really didn't have that much of an impact in that way, like, oh, my God, she's a freak. Right. It was kind of like, that's so cool, she made a movie, and a really, and it was kind of like in a really weird movie, you know? And no, the, the only thing... It, in, the only thing that was weird was when I came back because I had missed the first couple of months of eighth grade, mm -hmm. and I think um, I think the you know girls were kind of 
like giving me a hard time at first like oh you think you're so great because you're an actress there was one girl in particular who was this just this mean girl but fortunately I had other really good friends who were kind of like the tough girls and they stuck up for me and you know it was kind of like that typical tween stupid bs you know um but but it was all good I mean in the end like I I everybody just really thought it was a cool movie and there was no it kind of faded away I mean it came out in November it did really well it came out like Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, it beat Yentl, the other he she movie. Right. And um, and then it came out. It was re released again in June, the summer of like I forget maybe eighty three or eighty four. And um, and that you know it kind of went away a little bit. It wasn't really until like the internet that it made like a powerful comeback and people were like making websites and talking about it it was like whoa what's going on you know what was that like because you know that okay let's just say sleepaway camp wraps up like what did you you didn't really do anything acting wise after that because in the 80s they did ask you to come back and play uh you know angela baker and then you said no because you wanted to enroll in school and if you held off then you couldn't get in right well somebody's done a lot of poll work (laughs) 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 um yeah no i you know i was a kid and i just i was doing commercials and i did audition for some really cool sitcoms like give me a break and i think i auditioned for who's the boss you know i was around that circuit but I did, you know, just theater and kind of, you know, was a kid. And then I really decided once college came about that I wanted to enroll in a university where I could study and become a serious actress. So I got into NYU, early decision into Tisch School of the Arts. And at that time, the Michael Simpson and I met, and it was kind of like, I think he had already done Fast Times with Pamela and thought she'd be good for the role. So... I, I asked my manager, like, what do you think? And they were like, well, I, you know, if you want to do, we'll talk to him. But he's talking to Pamela Springsteen. And it kind of just evolved into, I really want to go to school. And why you won't, really, won't let me in early decision again, like I'd have to re-enroll. So it kind of all worked out just fine the way it was supposed to. And I went to school, and they did two and three in Georgia, like back to back. And um, and then it wasn't until, like, many years later that I decided, okay, now I want to you know, do this for real, and I was in New York City and started again with um, some theater and then got into a bunch of horror movies, and then I was fortunate where I got to do a lot of, you know, those kinds of movies and yeah. play the killer and the victim, and I've had a ball, so wow. it's really, it's really awesome. Fun. So the internet basically made this whole thing come back to life after the, you know, mid-80s, so... All of a sudden, everyone's like, Sleepaway Camp, Angela Baker, Felissa Rose, and then they start talking Return to Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, it was really like one person in particular. I mean, it was Jeff Hayes um, started SleepawayCampMovies.com, and he was like the biggest fan, Mm -hmm. aside from my husband. (laughs) He got in touch with me through email and was like, look, I'm making a website. You wouldn't even believe how many fans there are, like, worldwide. And... um, could I come meet you? He lived like um, in, I think in in Boston, and I lived in Manhattan. And he came to see me, and we hung out. And he was like, you know, I really think we should try to find Robert and like maybe do another one. It, it just seemed crazy to me. I was like, what? Little did I know, Robert lived like in the same town as me. Wow. And um, for all those years, like he and I never bumped into each other. And so we got in touch with him. I found his number like in an old book that I had kept from being on the set. We called and we got back together and Anchor Bay did the commentary. And that was the first time I had seen him in like, I don't know, 16, 17 years. Wow. And I'll never forget, he came to my door and he had flowers. And it was like just seeing each other, you know, like we just saw one another last week on the set. And... um and then we got back in touch with Jonathan, you know, Ricky, and we got in touch with a whole bunch of people. And it, it's, you know, Sleep Like Camp is just this odd little family, and we've, all of us have kind of, like, kept in touch. And um, then when Robert wanted to do the, you know, the next installment return, it was kind of like just a natural segue into getting that together. And, and all because of Jeff, it all happened. So wow. it was 
it was really cool. The whole thing is just so weird because we did the Fangoria convention like in 2000 or 2001, I can't remember, and it was huge. We had never been to a Fangoria convention. It was in New York City, and Tony Timpone was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. It was like standing room only, and it was, it was just amazing. We signed, we signed at the table for like, I don't know, four hours. We were signing stuff wow. for people. Yeah, you have so. a huge fan base. It's unbelievable, like, the nicest, coolest, like, people in the world. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, in going to conventions around the country, I've met, I, they've become my friends. I mean, it's, like, really, really incredible to, to go from city to city and, like, meet people and hear their whole, like, sleepaway camp story. Yeah, and, when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah! They're like, oh, my God, you know, I went with my boyfriend and this happened. It's just crazy, like, you know, and... Uh, I, I feel really lucky because of it. It's, you know, again, as I said, my husband, like, he was a huge fan and put his, the face, the end face on a t-shirt and went on the show Jackass. Oh, yeah. And I had seen that episode and I was like, who is that weird guy, like, wearing, I'm like, is that my face on his shirt from Sleepaway Camp? And, and sure enough, Jeff investigated Jeff Hayes and he was like, yeah, that's, the lead singer of CKY and he's like a huge fan and he put your face on his CD and he put your face on his guitar and I was like okay this guy's a little strange <laughs> well oddly I enough we're big fans of CKY too so just want to say oh, that. that's so cool well yeah yeah that was just you know a bizarre situation and we emailed for like two years and then when we were doing return to sleep boy camp I said you know what why don't you come and you know visit so the whole band got on like the red eye the next day wow. and um i met the band but i didn't meet darren he was like sleeping and so uh they were like yeah darren's like wait till he meets you He's cr he loves this movie like this is his life you know until uh, and they're like aren't you married and i said no no i'm not married and they're like oh, wait till he finds <laughs> out and the minute we met i was like all right so you want to like hook up <laughs> really <laughs> I thought he was so cute. I was like, you are the cutest thing I've ever met. And like, you've been my friend through email, you know. Wow. I said, you want to conquer the world with me? And he was like, uh, okay. And that weekend, we were like, okay, we're in love. We're going to move in together. We got our names tattooed to our fingers. And we've been together now for nine years. Wow. That is that the is greatest great. story. <laughs> <laughs> Three kids later, you know. And we're still like the best of friends and like totally madly in love like it's bizarre he's always like this is so weird. he still says like my birthday was a couple of weeks ago and he's like you you know i still have a crush on you like you're still angela to me oh my <laughs> so, god it's weird <laughs> that is so crazy so i guess yeah. camp kill yourself it was all about sleepaway camp then <laughs> you know what he, he loved friday the 13th and sleepaway camp and really when those guys were like making their crazy you know videos and stuff yeah Darren always thought, like, let's make it a weird camp-type horror movie title, and he thought Camp Kill Yourself would be really cool. And then the record label didn't like um, Camp Kill Yourself, so they just, you know, did the CKY. Right. But, now, Mike, yeah. Mike, you have a... Uh... You have the same kind of thing going on with Daniel Harris. Do you think this will work out for you? <laughs> well, um, by the way, Danielle and I have recently become friendly, and I have to say she is just such a smart and beautiful and amazing and incredibly talented person. So, you know, she, uh, she's she's awesome. Yeah. yeah she's, so good luck. Mike has her yeah. pants on his, on his walls. So. Yeah, her uh, screen-worn pants from uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yeah. Really? Are framed on my wall. Yes. Oh, true story. Wow! Wow! Well, you see, you never know. Yeah. You have to do something <laughs> shocking to get her attention, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Return to Sleepaway Camp, how um, how do you feel about like the capacity and like in which your character returned to the movie? Like, were you okay with the whole thing about being hidden with your face and your voice, or did you want to do like? the same kind of vibe as part two and three where Angela was on screen, like, basically, and the main character the whole time. Like, what, what, what did you have in mind when you guys first started talking? And how did it get to the part where you were going to be, like, what you were? Well, to be honest with you, when Robert handed me the script, definitely being an actress and having an ego as a woman, I was like, oh, I can't believe, like, I'm, I can't, you know, in doing this role, 
it won't really be me. Right. But then, you know, after I got over the initial, like, you know, kind of arrogance that that has attached to it, it was like, no, this, this is a really, really, really cool role. I'll never have the opportunity to play something like this. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was going to be intense. Like, I was in makeup for six hours every morning when I was in that character. <laughs> so I thought, this is really neat. Like, I get to experience a whole other side of this character and I thought it was genius that he really kind of thought up something that was going to be totally fun, not only as an actor, but as a viewer, you know, as somebody watching the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you know, people had their own ideas that they could tell it was me and blah, blah. But, but, but nonetheless, I think that it was a really cool character and a great way to bring her back. And, you know, myself as the actor, I felt really honored to play that, that role. Yeah. You know, I, I never did, and nor will I ever get to play that type of, you know, character again. Well, if so. it means anything to you, I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't know? No, I didn't know it was you. I, I didn't think, uh, I, if you, you know, I didn't think you could really tell. I mean, it's quite the disguise. Yeah, you know? I, didn't, I didn't think about it. I just thought that was like a, uh, you know, a character. I didn't think about it being you. I just wondered where you were. <laughs> but, you know, it's a weird, it's funny because I do think that in horror movies you get those weird characters. Mm-hmm. So yep. I think the person blends, you know, in a weird way. But we had a lot of laughs on set. I mean, like, I know there were times when we couldn't get through scenes because everybody would just crack up <laughs> when I was around. They were hysterical. Like, even behind, there's, I think... Um, some of the features on the DVD, Vincent Pastore was hysterical. Mm-hmm. He could not, like, stop laughing one night. We were just, like, getting giddy. And he, every time he looked at me, he, he would just, like, crack up. So it was fun, too. It wasn't just, like, all. Oh, it wasn't so serious. We right. had a really fun time. It was really cool being like that. No, was I, did I get to be sexy and wear, like, you know, cute makeup? No, but I didn't give a shit. It was, what, did, what does your husband think of the of the fourth one. Oh my god he loves return to sleepaway camp he and he's my worst critic like most movies i show him he's like ah that again you know like he he there are some movies i've done that i love and he's just like oh that was terrible um he's really, really on oh he's so honest with me wow. but he really loved return to sleepaway camp he felt that it was very much you know it was done in the same vein as the first one that it was yes. that you know, can't be 80s kind of cheesy. Yeah, you know. definitely. And he liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the charm of the movies, really. Yeah, definitely. Whatever happened to the, the reunion? I know it's like it's weird because these movies, they seem to be taking so long for the next one. Like you recorded Return of Sleep Boy and it took like two or three years with the CGI. And now everyone was excited for the reunion because you got that ant back, right? Oh, right, Desiree Gould, who played Aunt Martha, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then we were all wondering, and, you know, Jonathan's always up for it. I remember I hung out with Jonathan in, in like, a bar for, like, an hour uh, in Cherry Hill, New Jersey at a convention. Oh, my God, yeah, Monster Mania, and he missed the whole oh. Q&A. Was that because of you? I think, <laughs> I think it was, yeah. It was 2000, yeah. 2009, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, because I was having a baby. It was August of 09, yep. so I didn't get yeah, to make that. I. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah he yeah. definitely, uh, he's definitely a cool guy to hang with, especially in the bar, but yeah, he, <laughs> he missed that whole q And, um, you know, we didn't have any plans to make, um, that movie. Um, it kind of wound up on IMDb. I asked Robert all the time, like, what's the deal? And then, as of recently, there's been talk about actually remaking Sleepaway Camp. It's kind of like the last of that you know, era of movies. Oh. Um, Let's see, I don't want that yet, though. I need one more Angela. <laughs> well, you know, the ants coming back. You got Jonathan. I mean, if you remake it, then that's like, it's at that, that's it. Is that sacrilegious? Should we not be remaking uh, it? <laughs> maybe, maybe just after one more. <laughs> see, I you disagree. Know, I, I think you should remake it, but you have to be in it in some capacity. I said I'd Martha. like to play Aunt Martha. Yep. I was that's like, the funniest love- thing. Yeah. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Richard, Angela. Um, <laughs> I would love to play that character. I mean, I would adore that. But I think it always comes down to money, you know. Right. Ultimately, it's like who's going to put up the money for this. So yeah. um, I think it's the powers that be, like whoever 
you know, I know people have approached Robert. I don't know what he's going to do. There will be something. I can say that. Like, really? I, I, oh. I mean, just in that, you know, we all want to do something. Mm-hmm. What it is, I don't know, but I definitely think that there is going to be another installment. Whether I mean, I shouldn't say installment. I don't know if it's going to be a you know sequel. I don't know if it's going to be a um, remake. A remake. I don't know, but I know that there, you know, if I have it my way, there will be in the next year or two another Sleepaway Camp movie. Wow, that's so, awesome. Well, we're we'll looking see. forward to that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. thank you. I hope, fingers crossed, that it you know that it happens. We'll see. Yeah. Now I got one question. I don't know if you're yeah. if you're okay with talking about it, and if if you're not, we'll just edit it right out. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. okay. So you and Jonathan actually started dating as adults. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I thought you were going to say as kids. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's broached this subject, my friend. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, that's okay. I'm totally cool with it. You know what? It's so funny because he and I do a lot of the conventions together now, and that's everybody, and we're always hanging out together because we're really close friends, and, um, you know, people know that I had a big crush on him, and we were, like, dating for, like, a week on the, you know, on the original set. Uh But, yeah, then we met up again, like, many years later, close to 20 years later, and, um... You know, it was just like one of those things we were both single for like 10 minutes and we were like <laughs> reminiscing of what, you know, what had been in the past. But it was never anything serious. He'll say to you he was always afraid of me. Now, you'll have to ask him. I have no idea what that means. Um, but somehow that, you know, that just never worked out. And thank God because, you know, he has a beautiful and wonderful marriage and child and you know, I'm married to Darren and have an amazing life with him. So it worked out the way, again, like it should. But, yeah, we, we uh, you know, we tried to see if there was anything there. <laughs> yeah. We gave it the old college try. We gave it the old college try. And, you know, it's like we had chemistry, but it's just the wrong time, wrong place. It was, it was never right for us. But he's a great guy. He, and, we're, yeah. and we're fantastic friends. So. Yeah, yeah. When when I was hanging out with him, he was really the coolest guy. He's really, really a cool guy, and uh, he's actually coming on the show for uh, the second half of this uh, retrospective. So, oh, you're gonna. Oh, so I hope you're gonna ask him the same question. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> it will be interesting to hear his answer. <laughs> Should I ask him to have a couple of drinks before he does the interview? He's hilarious. He's so. Well, oh, that goes without saying wasted. for this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we all have drinks before we record this. <laughs> hey, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. More yeah. fun. The whole you know the whole party atmosphere thing going on. Of course, uh, definitely. So, so you're you're a horror fan. What do you think of all these remakes? Are you uh, do you think they're cool? Is that why you want to do one, or or have you not liked what what's come out, or what? That's a good question. I it's funny because um, several years ago when we really got hit with like you know everything being remade, I was like totally against it i couldn't believe they were remaking these movies they were you know how could you touch these you know incredible um pieces of art like i just love them these classics yeah but um then i spoke to a friend of mine jason paul column who i did um, a documentary with and he's a huge horror um not only fan but filmmaker and he's he kind of opened my mind he was like you know, if you really think about it, it's cool that they they get this attention, and a new one is remade, and then those the new generation of fans get to you know look take a look at the old classics. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of a neat way to look at it. Like it's shedding yeah. light, you know, to kids today what what was. But um, I still wrestle with it. I still kind of wish that they would leave well enough alone. Um, but. You know, then when I kind of had that feeling, I was like, well, it would be cool to see what they would do with, with Sleepaway Camp, but only if Robert is at the helm and if he is the writer and director of the new one. But unfortunately, that's the problem we're running into. We're running into, like, money people want to put in their young uh, writer and director. Right. You know, right. they don't want right. Robert. Right, right, right. You know, right. they don't want the old... 
did you get a good return on the uh, the last movie, Return of Slippery? No, and that's also the problem. You know, that didn't really do so great. Oh, it didn't? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, huh. it's, I mean, I don't know. I can't say. I, You know, I'm not at the... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have no idea, but I'm getting yelled at by my five-year-old right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess the last thing, so you can get back to your, uh, you know, the kids and everything. What, what... <laughs> We're like, let's talk about slicing and dicing. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about killing people later. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so what are, you, what are you up to now? Like, what could the fans look forward to? Like, any new movies you're going to be in or any conventions you're going to be at? I'll be at Day of the Dead um, July 6th through the 8th um, in Indiana. Uh, that's coming up in, like, less than a month. And I have a bunch of... I think I'm going, doing Spooky Empire in Orlando, like October, November. I have a bunch coming up, um, and I've just done like a, a lot of films, so they're kind of like coming out, you know, one at a time. This movie Poe that I did, which is kind of like a Silence of the Lambs, it's really cool. Um, and we're going to be doing the sequel. That one just came out, uh, I think, in May, and then we're going to be doing a sequel to that. And it um, seems like people like that. And then I did another movie with Jason Hughes called um, Breath of Hate that should be coming out. And okay. I can't even think. Yeah, like a bunch. It's been great. And I'm kind of working on a project with Tiffany Shepis right now that has to do with a reality TV show. So really? I hope everybody keeps their fingers crossed about that because we're kind of like in the talking about that. Well, we've so we're kind of past the talking stage. We filmed a little. So oh. we'll see what happens. Maybe on Sci-Fi. Wow. That could be cool. We'll awesome. see. Yeah. Some talk, you know. Please do whatever you can to come to New Jersey. Please, monster. Oh Man. my God, yeah. I loved. I have to say, like I was there. I guess it was in 2010. I had the best time. It was like wow. I hadn't done conventions a lot of them up to that point, and I just love them. Wow, I so. can't believe I didn't know about that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder why I couldn't have went. There must have been some reason I couldn't go. It's, yeah, and you were out of the, you were out of the country. You were yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. sure. You were on a safari somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get them next. Time. Yeah, net, if I knew you were there, I, I would have went to great lengths. That's, well, I, I'm hoping. I would love. I hope they invite me back. You know, you always kind of keep your fingers crossed. Like, uh, I yeah. just did blood on the beach in Virginia. We had a great time there. Oh, cool. So. Yeah. All right, well, the next, you know, if you ever come by, me, you, and Jonathan hang out in the bar, right? <laughs> yeah, hey, there you go. That's what those conventions are all about. What happens in whatever city stays in that city. Exactly. You know, that's the crazy, that's, that's awesome. So, all right, well, yeah. thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. Thank really you. I appreciate it. You. Thanks so much for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank and, you. And uh, looking forward to your new stuff and uh, looking forward to rewatching the old. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Okay, good luck, guys. Thank you for everything. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Tune in to episode 21 for part two of our Sleepaway Camp retrospective. Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. And Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland.